And hello, welcome to Solo Playthroughs. We are doing the train scenario of the Dunwich Legacy Cycle, uh, the return to Dunwich Legacy Cycle. It is the return to the Essex County Express, making sure my mic is on. We are good to go. Let me get the scenario card up there. There we go. Look at that. So this is technically, this is the second Mythos pack in the Dunwich Legacy Cycle, uh, but it's I think just scenario three again because of the there's one A and one B in the deluxe box expansion. So we are playing with the fourth survivor character to be released. That is uh, Calvin Wright. Calvin Wright is one of my personal favorites. He is the haunted. Uh, very very wacky dynamics. The math can get a little nuts. Get my microphone off my beard hairs for a second there. Um, and uh, this is going to be a, a really high variance scenario for Calvin Wright, especially uh, early in the campaigns. Calvin is still kind of getting beefed up, and by beefed up, he's still kind of taking the trauma that he's going to need to be highly successful in later uh, scenarios. Uh, I do love this campaign, this scenario. Um, this might be one of the few scenarios that I'm not convinced the return to did it much favors. I think the original was really good. They made a lot of changes. They didn't make a. They they added a lot of content to this scenario, and I don't know if they really needed to. Um, you know, there's a some ideas I really like, some I don't. Some of the train cards really do up the difficulty, especially in a true solo game. And this was already a scenario that was quite hard going in. Uh, and then there's one major change, which we'll get to pretty quick, uh, that does change how this scenario feels. Good morning. Uh, <laughs> I'm, it's night here, so thank you for joining me from wherever you are joining me from. Um, and that's that's cool to see uh, some people in the chat already. Speaking of the chat, Mrs. Playthroughs is driving the kiddo across the city real quick. She shall be back. I'm not sure what time to expect her. I will do my best to go back from the game to the chat and, and, and uh, vice versa so, so we can kind of see what's going on there, but uh, you will not get Sarah's cheery self here for a while. Um, so just be extra patient as far as if, if you put something out there, uh, I'll definitely look over and see it at some point. Remember, we are on a 25 second delay. So what you're seeing now happened 25 seconds in the past. That is to ensure uh, less make less chance of issues with buffering uh, and it's just kind of what works for me uh, usually works well again I'll get to the chat when I can and we'll we'll, we'll kind of figure out what's going on at that point um, so I do want to get the encounter deck set up the encounter deck has in here already what I have is the dark cult encounter set which again is one of the originals from the night of the zealot campaign and then we have all of the specific uh, encounter cards that come with the Essex County in Express um, scenario pack. Remember, I play the return twos. My favored way to play the return twos is I will take the original encounter set that was supposed to be in the scenario if you weren't playing the return two, and then I take the encounter set that's supposed to be in the scenario with the return two. I mix them up and I take the, the requisite number of cards, right? So we're, you know, in, if you're playing the regular Dunwich Legacy Cycle, you have the Ancient Evils encounter set. If you're playing the Return 2, it says, hey, take the Resurgent Evils encounter set. There's three of each, so I mix up these six cards and I just choose three. That is one of the recommended variants in the Return 2, and it's one I really like a lot. It just keeps, I because I, I rarely play these campaigns without playing the Return 2, and I like seeing the old cards uh, as I go. It just makes it more fun for me. Yeah, <laughs> uh, Calvin's great. Um, I'll, I'll definitely talk about more about him as I go through the build. Let me get this encounter deck set up. So I'm going to take three of these cards. Bam, those are out. I'm doing the same thing. So we have the Beyond encounter set. We have the Beyond the Threshold encounter set that came with the return to. There's 12 cards total. We only need six. So I'm going to shuffle these up, take six. They're already pretty shuffled anyway, so I'm not going to go too crazy here. So one, two, three, four, five, six. That's out. And then we have the Erratic Fear Encounter set that came with the Return 2, plus the original Striking Fear Encounter set. There's 14 cards here, seven from each of those sets. And I'm just going to take the top seven off of here. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Done. I'm going to take all of these cards. 
and this uh, deck I've already built. I do find the, re the Dumbwitch cycle has some of the bigger encounter decks uh, when it comes to how they're built. I mean, some of the scenarios just really get insane with how many cards they load into their encounter deck. I think scenario six, which is really the fifth Mythos pack, I th if I'm not mistaken, I think that encounter deck is something like 40 deep, which in a solo game feels a little bit excessive. Uh, <laughs> so it also means for like high variance because with so many cards in the deck, you know, they really will, you know, change this, how the scenario plays will change uh, game to game based on. Uh, really what comes out there. So, should be good and mixed up. And that is it. Cool. I will do the trains last. Let me talk through my Calvin Wright deck build. Now, Calvin, you'll see I do more doubles than most of my um, most of my investigators. I mean, early on, it's just finding a creative way to take some damage. I mean, you, you're going to need to take damage. You're going to need to take horror, uh, or you're going to be pretty darn useless as the scenario goes on there is like a midpoint where like you get really strong but then again the stronger you get as calvin the closer to death you are which is kind of a rough uh <laughs> give and take i mean he defines brinksmanship as far as how you know um this game plays because you just get right to the edge uh, of dying but you have to find a way to survive should you end up taking some horror or damage um as you go now there you know, I think with, with Calvin, it's always trying to find soaks that if you have like your leather coat out and or your cherished keepsake or having an ally, um, you know, his, his unique asset really helps in getting the soaks out that if you get yourself up to five damage and five horror, well, now you still have ways to take extra damage and horror. Obviously, that can really screw you if you are... Um, if you have to take direct damage or horror, but that's where his unique asset comes in, which I'll discuss in a little bit. Um, there also, there's things like the, uh, the five of pentacles, the tarot card from circle undone to increase your damage or horror, uh, which is really helpful. So there's ways you can kind of be aware of that. What's really bad for Calvin is he comes from the forgotten age, right? He's the fourth survivor to be released, but there's like the curse of Yig encounter card. If anyone's played forgotten age a bit, that, it re just reduces, I think it reduces your sanity by one. Well, if you're maxed out at a five um, to give yourself the best stats that you can get, and then you get that, which reduces your sanity by one, well, now you're dead. So in some ways, you you always have to leave a buffer when you're playing a Forgotten Age. Understanding the, the treachery cards don't do the same thing in the other cycles, it's a little bit easier to... to you can be a little more confident in getting up to that five because you don't have to worry about, you know, losing uh, sanity. And now all of a sudden you went from being as strong as possible to being as, de as dead as possible, which is uh, not the same thing. All right, Calvin Wright. He is the haunted. Sometimes life gives you a choice. Accept the lot that uh, is given to you or stand up for who you are and what you believe. All right, let me, I butcher that. I'm going to say that again. Accept the lot that is given to you or stand up for who you are and what you believe. Calvin chose the latter. On the edge of death, bleeding out on the side of a dirt road, he received a vision, a terrifying vision of the earth. Sundered and jow, the love of his life, turning to ash in the vortex of a blazing inferno. Then Calvin made another choice. He reached out to the darkness and pulled it within him. He would not die, not today. The world needed him. Jow needed him. Um, so again, his stat line is pretty simple. Zero, 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 and zero. So that, where we go. However, he gets plus one willpower and plus one intellect for every horror on him, and plus one combat and plus one agility for each damage on him. Uh, his Elder Sign effect is a plus zero. Thank you. <laughs> Come on, man. Sometimes I swear Matt Newman just sitting in an office somewhere just being vindictive for, for no reason. Uh, give me a plus two or something. Uh, but yeah, you can heal one damage or one horror, or you can do the converse and you can take one direct horror or one direct damage, uh, which again, if it's early in the scenario, something you might want to do. So there is a little bit of a give and take. I much would have preferred a plus two when you can heal one, but what do I know? All right. Um... His unique asset and his unique weakness. The unique asset is until the end of time, Calvin Wright deck only, uh, direct damage and direct horror may be assigned to this asset. Normally it can only be assigned to your investigator card, so that's really helpful. That can really um, 
come to again i don't find it so huge in um in Dumwich, but again i think there's more other campaigns that, that do the direct damage and direct horror thing a lot this comes in in pretty big uh and then voice of the messenger you must either choose one take one direct damage and suffer one physical trauma or take one direct horror and suffer one mental trauma um so this treachery is interesting is that it's a weakness but it's actually really instrumental to helping Calvin get stronger throughout the course of a campaign. Um, I got a little unlucky in starting the first, because I do I do play through the scenarios up to the point where we are in this cycle, and I only pulled this once in my first three scenarios, so I only ended up taking one trauma, right? And I took a mental trauma, um, so that's not as beefed up as I would like to be in going into scenario four. I'd like to be two and one or something like that. Um, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, the basic weakness I drew is the 13th vision. Now this was a circle undone card. Uh, you put it into play, it made you, makes you lose ties and it's a double action to get rid of. An action economy in this scenario is massive. So if this comes out, I'm most likely going to have to leave it and just hope for the best. Uh, you, you rarely have two free actions just lying around. So as far as weaknesses go, it could be better, could be worse. You know, it, it's about right. Uh, I do have two story assets. Again, if we go through the cycle, remember when I was Wendy Adams, we found Warren Rice in the university, and I think I got four XP in that scenario. I'm looking at my little chart here. No, I got three XP in the university, and I found Warren Rice. I got four XP in the casino, uh, and I got additional XP, and then ended up taking Armitage. So those are my two uh, unique story assets and then in the last scenario when I was playing as William Yorick uh, I did ex exile one card so I, I factor that into the XP I could spend and then I took a physical trauma so that is here so I'm just going to keep that storyline going remember I uh, pulled decidedly poorly uh, in that uh, in that scenario almost was able to pull it out but just too many things went against me and was not able to uh, <laughs> to snatch victory out of the jaws of the defeat now what does that mean we were at the museum why to get the Necronomicon because we're trying to prevent it from falling into the hands of these cultists that are in Dunwich uh, clearly they now have the Necronomicon which is bad because now they can use it to, to try to bring Yog Sothoth into the world, uh, which would uh, mean utter destruction for all of humanity, the way I understand the mythos. So now we're going to Dunwich to try to see if we can gain control of the situation and, and try to prevent the cultists from using the Necronomicon for ill means, uh, and, and we're going to try to prevent that if we can help it. All right, so how do I build this Calvin Wright deck? Um, you'll see a lot of the same survivor cards. I did very much go toward cards from later later released cards more so than i normally do and i'll kind of explain that um, as far as knight of the zealot cards we have overpower two copies of guts i grabbed a leather coat which is that is a that is a zealot card i thought that was from dumbwich i guess that's not uh, i have an emergency catch i have a leather coat survival instinct a look what i found and a lucky uh, from dumbwich i have two rise to the occasions i do not normally take this card why is this card so amazing uh, you can only commit to a skill test where you skill test you are performing if the difficulty of the test is too higher than your base skill value. Make no mistake, your base skill value for everything is always zero. This is a bonus. Uh, there's actually a hilarious <laughs> like side story here. I was playing a three-person Forgotten Age campaign with two friends, and I pulled uh, Calvin Wright, and we did our basic weaknesses, and I drew the Stubborn Detective. Now, what does the Stubborn de Detective do? He cancels out all bonuses to your stat line so i basically it was like the worst weakness i ever could have drawn and we it was so bad that i almost threw it back and i was like now nah, let's let's figure out and we'll play it out um and so far we actually covid kind of stalled that campaign by five scenarios in uh but it, it's actually been okay just finding creative ways to deal with the detective even though my my stats are just zero the entire time super fun um 
my Carcosa cards, I have two copies of Resourceful. I find Resourceful really resourceful when playing with Calvin. Like, if you had your leather coat out and you just... Because you never really know... Like, some scenarios, you're really struggling with damage. Some you're struggling with horror. Some you're struggling with both. But usually it's one or the other, especially early. So Resourceful can get you one of those back out, or it can get you another rise to the occasion if you need it. There's a lot of things that can happen with, with uh, the Resourceful card. Um, I did grab... I use one XP to get another copy of a test of will. That is what I exiled in the last scenario. And then we got my little teddy bear. Cause of course, who doesn't need a teddy bear winging? It can be really important to Calvin. I have a take heart and I have a live and learn. So those are the forgotten aid charges I have. Uh, and then after that circle undone comes in really big for Calvin, uh, meat cleaver. I find this so much better than fire ax for Calvin, the ability to take a horror. So if you're like really not doing well on the willpower and intellect front, you get engaged with an enemy. Not only are you defeating the enemy, you're taking that horror to kind of boost up your stat as you go. That can be very, very important. It's one of my favorite weapons, uh, in general, but especially with Calvin, I find it super uh, huge. Uh, I did spend an XP for the Five of Pentacles. Again, if you draw it in your opening hand, I will do very deep mulligans to try to get this. Um, you know, if you can get that plus one sanity, plus one health. I mean, you come in with Calvin and you're a 6-6 six, six and you have the Five of Pentacles, it's great. You just have to be careful. You want to have at least one other asset out because if you have a card that makes you lose an asset and you're relying on the Five of Pentacles to still be alive, uh, that is a bad combination for you. So uh, something to be aware of. Uh, and then we have Trial by Fire, which is a uh, it's a base card, Circle Undone. You get to raise one of your skills to five. This card can come in really big early in a scenario. Hey, thanks, Andy. I appreciate it. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to need it. Uh, playing somebody named The Haunted. So I, <laughs> all the luck I can get would be amazing. All right. You will notice a smattering of blue. Why do I have blue cards? Well, interesting thing. So Calvin is actually a guardian in some of the Arkham Files products uh, from Fantasy Flight. And if you think about it, it, it makes sense. Um, so his his deck build is either survivor cards, neutral cards, or cards that have the spirit tagline, uh, that sort of keyword. So the spirit keyword comes in really, really big. Um, so I did grab three spirit uh, cards from the Guardian class. Uh, we have I've Had Worse, Fast, when you're dealt damage and her horror, cancel to two of it and get that many resources. Obviously, I'm not looking to use this card early. I want to take the damage and horror early, but late game, I'm about to die. Ooh, I can cancel that and get money for it. Thank you. That'd be great. Um, especially with the train cars potentially just giving out damage and horror like it's candy. That card can come in really big. One, two punch is great. Um, Again, this is a, so I've had worse is a circle undone card. A uh, one, two punch is a card from the, uh, the, uh, the, the Cho deck, um, Nathaniel Cho deck, which is fantastic. Uh, there's a bunch of spirit cards in there. As I've progressed, I've taken some out for XP cards uh, that are from red XP cards. Uh, but one, two punch is one that I kept in. You get plus one for your attack. And then if you succeed, you can fight again. You get plus two and deal plus one damage. So in theory, if, unless you draw the tentacles, assuming your stat line's high enough, you can do as many as three damage with that card. It's really strong. Uh, the four Dream Eaters cards I have are all 1 XP each, and I find these cards have be quickly become one of my personal favorites for my Survivor builds. You have Brute Force, I have two copies of that, and you have Sharp Vision. They are basically parallels to each other. One is for combat, one is for intellect. The basic idea is if you're doing a basic action, right? So if I'm doing a fight, I can't be like, I can't get this effect if I'm like shooting a bullet, right? It's literally just doing a basic fight action. Uh, intellect, I can't get this effect if I was using my flashlight. It's a basic action. Um, then you get plus three instead of just a plus one. So you can use, I can, I can make this combat, I can, I can add this skill card to a combat, right? Like I could be doing a gunfire attack and I'll get plus one, right? But if I do that, I'm losing the rest of this effect. If I'm doing a basic fight or a basic intellect, then I get the, the icon that's there plus two. And if I win by two, I get an enhanced effect. If I win by two with brute force, I do three damage instead of just the one, even though it's a basic fight. And if I win by two or more with sharp vision, I get two clues instead of just one. So they're very, very strong cards. I think they're super important to a Calvin Wright build. And then we have, um, I'll talk about this last I have two cards from the Stella deck. I have Old Keyring and the 18 Derringer. I like both of these a lot because they're guaranteeing you two successes. 
you're going to get max value out of these, right? You might lose a couple, but you're going to get max value. I find the old key ring better than flashlight, even though there's only two keys on it as opposed to three charges. Flashlight, I could have three charges, and I could, if I lose two of them, I only got one clue. That's not a that's not a good, you know, for two energy, you know, and three actions. That's not great. Here is only it's not not energy. I'm playing too much spirit on the or two uh, resources. This is one resource. I get two keys. And if I pull the tentacles three times, I still have two keys, right? So that's really, really helpful. And then the derringer, kind of the same thing. This is good for four damage. When I put it out, again, I might fail a couple of times, but it's good for four damage ultimately before it, it has no more ammo, right? So I think you're getting a lot of bang for your buck there. And then I took Blood Eclipse as the last card in my deck. It is a one XP card. Um, it, it This is from the Return to Forgotten Age. So there's a, I think it's a three XP card that I, I like for some builds, not a ton. Uh, this card is really interesting. So as an additional cost to play Blood Eclipse, you take two damage. Uh, your attack uses intellect, uh, I'm sorry, willpower instead of combat, and you get plus two willpower, and you deal three damage if you succeed. So one damage plus two. That's a really nice card with Calvin early, that if my willpower, say I took a few horror, so my horror is a four, but I have no combat, well, I still have a card in my deck that if it's in my hand, gives me a chance to not only do three, three damage, it also allows me to boost up my fight as I go. So it's a little niche, but I think it's worth the one XP to put in your Calvin Wright build. Again, but that's when they return to Forgotten Age. Um, so it's it's not, you know, if you're like, I don't have that card, you will, yeah, <laughs> it's in return to Forgotten Age. That's where you would get it. All right, let me shuffle this up. Yam it away enough. We're going to have to build our train here. Um, and uh, we'll see. We'll see what the... <laughs> how that, that train goes for us. But I need to take my five resources. Two, three, four, and five. And trying to get a eyelash off the table. Cool. So the encounter deck, I'm sorry, the, enca the encounter deck, the chaos bag isn't terrible on Dumbwitch. It does get progressively worse as you go. Um, there's definitely something with Dumbwitch that they just start giving it. They just like, I think you get a basic weakness, another one in scenario six, and then they add a minus five in scenario seven. It's like, come on, man. Um, but again, we started this campaign with 15 tokens in the chaos bag. We are now up to 17. Again, we had to add the broken tablet. Why? Because we did not save the students at the university. And we also had to add the minus three because the instructions tell us to before this scenario the only that changes the setup is that that is not the original uh, agenda the original agenda is agenda one you're told to take the original agenda one out of play and you replace it with agenda zero which that is uh and then below that would be a new agenda one Ooh, exciting all right we have our four engine cars there are the three original plus the ones from there's one that comes with the return to which it's a little bonkers, but we'll see if we get it. So I'm going to roll the die. I got four, so that is our engine car. We'll put that over here. So that's out. Now we have the original eight train cars from the Dunwich, uh, from the, the original Mythos pack, and then the, the return to added two more train cars. So I'm going to roll a D10 if I could find it. Where are you? The D10? Nope, that's not a D10. This is a D10. All right, so I'm going to roll this twice. We got number eight. So we're going to put up six train cars total. So that's one. I rolled number three. We have eight train cars left. I'm going to roll a D8. I rolled a six. I'm going to roll this again. I rolled a seven. And now I'm going to roll a D6. For the last two train cars, I get a one. And I get a three. Boom. All right, there are six trains. I can even move this a little bit closer. Cool. So these four train cars are out of play. Let's hope we did okay there. I'm going to, uh, so the train cars are interesting. They all have the same exact back, so I have no idea which is which. Uh, train cars connected to the locations to the left and right of it. Obviously, this one's only connected to the train car to the, to the right because there is nothing to the left. And you cannot enter the train car uh, unless all the clues on the location to its left have been discovered, right? So I can't enter here until all the clues here are discovered. Um, so we're going to flip this over, and that's where we start. 
Now, uh, passenger car. Passenger car has a shroud value of two, a clue value of two per investigator, so two. Passenger car is connected to this location, and then after you enter, you must either discard cards from your hand with at least two total willpower icons or take two horror. However, the instructions for this campaign, this scenario, whether the original or the return to, you ignore the forced instruction on the starting car. Right? So that's really important. And uh, thematically, it makes more sense, right? Because like, you're basically just riding in a train, everything's fine, and then pff, stuff goes nuts. <laughs> so it, it wouldn't really make sense if that forced ability triggered and all of a sudden I have two horror on my first turn because, no, I was basically, I was chilling in the passenger car, just kind of riding along, and then, again, something fell out of the sky and, and uh, started tearing my world apart. Literally, let's get to the agenda. Um, the agenda reads, as the train to Dunwich comes to a jarring stop, you look out the window beyond, behind you and see an immense tear in the sky, like a rip in a piece of cloth. From this tear, a winged beach emerges. It lets out a painful screech and descends upon the train. That might be a foreshadowing of what's on the back of that card. I don't know, maybe. All right, Act 1, run. The train has stopped on a bridge high above the Miskatonic River. You might be able to survive the fall, but you don't like your chances. Your best bet is to make your way to the engine car as fast as you can and get the train running again. If an investigator enters the engine car all the way over here, uh, then we immediately advance. So we will see how that goes. I am going to draw up to my five cards, and I would really like a five of pentacles because it's cool. Uh, I get a meat cleaver. I have a leather coat, I have I've had worse, I have blood eclipse, and we have overpower. Uh, big fan of the meat cleaver. I will definitely keep my leather coat. Uh, the It's a little unfortunate because I'm looking at passenger car. Um, look what I found would be great. Sharp vision would be great. I mean, I'm, I'm tempted. I'm wondering if I shouldn't keep leather coat so I, I have a chance because I need to get those two clues, right? If you get stuck in that first car, <laughs> you, you've you got some problems. And it's very easy to do when you are playing as Calvin Wright, when I have a intellect of a one. All right, I will keep the meat cleaver. I want to do, a, I have to do a, a, a deep mulligan right now. So we're going to, yeah, blood eclipse isn't going to help with my intellect. All right, so let me get, give me a look what I found or, um, uh, the, the key, the, the the skeleton keys, or whatever the heck it is, uh, the key ring. So the, hopefully we can get something like that. We have until the end of time. Makes me feel better by getting rid of the leather coat. Old key ring. All right, that's fine. Uh, that's my unique weakness. Rise to the occasion and sharp vision. Oh, that's a that's a nice a nice set of uh, of cards there. I am not upset about that. So I really have two ways to try to get those clues. I mean, one is I could play a sharp vision. It would give me an intellect of a four, uh, and I would be investigating a four against a two. The problem with that, obviously, is that uh, one, I'd be very unlikely to trigger the, if I succeed by two or more, get an additional clue. So it's kind of a waste of sharp vision. Um, and, and two, a four to a two is far from guaranteed. However, again, this bag's not awful. You're still probably like 70% at that point if I ran the math. Hey, what's up, Ben? How are you doing, man? Um, so we'll see. I think that the, it makes more sense, and it's it's just a safer way to proceed. Uh, to let's make use of this old key ring while I can. So my first action, I'm putting old key ring into play. That costs one. There are two keys. My second action, I'm investigating. Location gets minus two shroud. So I'm investigating a one to a zero. Bam, I pulled the tentacles. Yes, good start. Here's the thing, I didn't succeed. So both the keys stay. <laughs> this is why I love the key ring, because it's it only costs me one, and I'm going to get value out of it. So my, my third action is I'm investigating the shroud value. Again, is a uh, doing a one to a zero. And bam, minus two. All right, so I have a one to a zero. My one modifies down. But you can't go modify, you, it modifies down to a minus one, which basically modifies up to a zero by the time we check the values. So it's a zero to a zero. Zero to a zero is successful since I succeeded. This goes away. But now you see how my, like, the basic weakness I drew could really be bad here. Uh, so hopefully I don't get that because uh, <laughs> I'm going to need to probably succeed another zero to zero on the next round. And then that is it. 
So those are my three actions. I'm going to draw uh, enemy phase, no enemies, upkeep phase. I draw a card. What is it? It is resourceful. Don't hate that. And I'm going to take myself a resource. So now I have five. I do want to try to get my meat cleaver out next turn. We'll see how that goes. Mythos phase. Putting a doom on the agenda. Please don't be ancient evils. Uh, oh. uh, that's not great. So resurgent evils. Resurgent evils I really like because it gives you some options. Uh, I must either draw the top two cards of the encounter deck, place one doom on the current agenda. This effect can cause the current agenda to advance or... I'm sorry. I draw. I can either draw the top two cards in the encounter deck, or I can place one doom in the current agenda, which can cause the current agenda to advance. Um, I really don't want that agenda to advance. Really, really don't. So I'm gonna draw the top two cards in the encounter deck, which is a little bananas, but uh, causing that to advance now is bad. So first card of the encounter deck is violent commands. This is actually going to be really helpful. So, put Violent Commands into play in your threat area, deal 2 damage to an investigator at your location, and discard it. At force at the end of your turn, test 3 willpower. If you fail, take a horror. I will definitely use that to beef myself up a little bit. Not horrible. And then, need for knowledge. Oh. Yeah, it's not good. Alright, so if you have clues, uh, test uh, intellect. Uh, against the number of clues you have for each point you fail you must either take a horror or place one of your clues oh fine i'll take a horror great so i'm testing a one to a one because i have one clue i'm going to get a minus two so i fail but i only failed by one so i either have to put a clue in my location or take a horror thank you for the flexibility there i will take the horror which gives me now an intellect value of a two which is good all right so that worked out fairly well all right, old key ring. I'm going to investigate. I'm investigating now a two because I just took that horror. So I'm doing a two against a zero with the old key ring. Let's get this clue, please. And bam, plus one. I succeed. That goes away. Now you commit. I committed to investigating with the old key ring. So even though the plus one gave me, I would have won without the key ring. It's not like, oh, I didn't mean, I wasn't using that. Like I was still using that. It was still that action that I was doing. Uh, and then it says, when there's no more keys on here, you just discard it. So that goes away. I get this clue, which gives me both the clues there, which is going to allow me to enter into the next train car. I have two more actions. I think I'm going to let that build up a little bit, which is fine. I'm going to spend my second action to put the meat cleaver out. And then I'm going to spend my third action to go into the train car adjacent to me. What is this? Passenger car. Uh, it's shroud value of one, clue value of one. Uh, after you enter the passenger car, you must either discard a car from your hand with at least one wild icon or take one damage and one horror. I would like the damage and the horror, please. <laughs> Thank you very much. So I now have two damage on me and three horror. So there are aspects of this scenario that can work to Calvin's advantage for sure. Um, and I think that will be good. And now we have, uh, I have no more actions left. Violent commands triggers at the end of my turn. I have to test a three to a three. And if I fail, I take a horror. Again, there are worse things in life than me taking horror. So, bam, I get a plus one. I succeeded. I did not take a heart, which is fine. Uh, I will probably trigger that next turn and just get my fight up. But I also want to get until the end of timeout before I start doing that as well. Great. Uh, enemy phase, nothing. Upkeep phase, I draw a card. It is guts. I take myself a resource. That gives me three. Meet those phase. We're putting... I feel like I'm out of. I feel like I should have more money than I do. No, I guess I spent four, and there were two rounds. Yeah, that makes sense. All right, cool. So now we go to the Mythos phase. Put a Doom on the agenda. Oh, the Doom threshold is met. What happens? Oh, it's a monster. Look, the conductor. So one of the reasons I, I don't like the conductor is that you already came from a scenario that had this like recurring monster, and then. It just seems gimmicky that now we're in another scenario with the return to that has a returning monster. Like, it just, you can kill it, but it's going to come back. It's like, we just did this. <laughs> like, I, I don't know. Like, I just, I feel like the scenario was so good as it was 
that this thing, I don't know what they were going for. I would much rather say, hey, we're going to give you a worse monster and it's going to come out after scenario, after like the second or third agenda and now you have to deal with it. Um, but I, they really wanted you to have the feeling that you need to run, but you already, if you're playing the return to, you already knew that you needed to run. So like, I, I don't know, whatever. That's just, I digress. Um, so the conductor, what is it? It spawns at the leftmost location. It is a hunter and it is massive. When it's defeated, it's attached to the current agenda. After you advance the attached agenda, draw the conductor. Uh, force when the conductor's location leaves play. Instead of discarding the conductor, move it one location to the right. Fine. So uh, we we added the doom, we checked the doom threshold, we advanced the agenda, and now we draw our encounter card. What is it? Uh, test three willpower. Oh, this is garbage. Um, where is this? Do I have a, no, I, I must have come out of there. Um, if you fail, take two damage, and you cannot move from this location. Well, I need to move from this location because I really don't feel like dealing with that jerk. So, how do I want to try to make sure I succeed at this is now the question. That gives me a 5 to a 3, which doesn't make me feel too warm and fuzzy, but I guess I don't have an Elder Sign in the bag. I mean, I don't have an Elder Thing in the bag, and I beat every other icon, so I guess I'm worried about the 2 minus 3s and the minus 4 and the auto lose. So, I'm 13 out of 17 if I do Guts. I think I'm better off doing Rise to the Occasion, because then that makes me 15 out of 17, which makes me feel a little bit happier about life. All right, so I'm doing Rise to the... I mean, the two damage actually wouldn't be... Oh, I'm about to take two damage from By the Commands. Yeah, I really need to beat that. So I'm going to do Rise to the Occasion. I'm doing a... My base is three less than this, so I can use Rise to the Occasion. And then I have plus three because I have three horror on me. So I'm doing a six to a three... And <laughs> yes, Steve, I should have taken an Uber. I'm gonna come back to Steve in a second. I gotta pull my minus four here first. Uh, so what is it? Minus one. Oh, look at that. I could have done guts and still succeeded. That's out. Another nice thing about getting rise to the occasion done is that if I use resourceful, resourceful only allows me to take back survivor cards, right? So if I use guts, guts isn't a survivor card. Um, so there's a, a a few advantages to that. Now. Steve, Steve made himself be known. Um, Steve has played this scenario like a dozen times with me. I think he's won it once, um, but who's really counting? That's another story. All right, let's um, let's do this. I'm going to commit resourceful. I'm doing an investigation of a three to a one. Resourceful makes it a four, and if I succeed, I get to take rise to the occasion back in my hand. Old key ring's tempting, but I I don't think old key ring is going to be as useful when I have something like sharp vision and I'm already at a three willpower. So my first action, I'm doing a six to a no, I'm sorry, a four to a one. Come on, don't do it to me. A zero, cool. So I get this clue. Since I was successful, I get to take a card not named resourceful from a discard a survivor card not named resourceful from a discard pile back into my hand. That is lovely. That was my first action. My second action, I'm going to give myself two damage. I don't really... Maybe do, do I want to keep testing that? No, I just think there's so much that can go bad. Uh, no, never mind. I'll worry about that next turn. What I'm going to do is my second action, I'm going to put until the end of time into play. That allows me to take direct damage and direct horror onto that. Gives me a nice cushion. Um... Ideally, I would have had the uh, the five of pentacles as well, because that would have been even better. But we are, it is what it is. I'm going to try to keep my, I keep, I have this light here now, and I keep holding my cards here, which isn't helpful. So I'm going to try to get these cards more in the light so people can see my hand. All right, so I spent one energy, one energy, God, too much to be done. It's one resource to put that in play. And then my next action is I'm going to move. I'm moving into this train car. Yeah, because I'm trying to outpace the conductor. Uh, shroud value 1, clue value 3. After you enter the passenger car, you must either discard cards from your hand with at least two total agility icons or take two damage. Well, I mean, it definitely makes me a little happier I didn't take the two damage from that. I think I take the two damage still. So one of the interesting dynamics with this scenario is that um, 
for a while, the original ruling was that you couldn't use wild icons as if they were agility icons. And then the player community kind of mutinied on that and said that was ridiculous. And Matt Newman, to his credit, was like, all right, that's fine. And they actually changed the ruling based on how players expected the game to play, right? If a wild card can be, if a wild icon could be anything for, you know, purposes of a skill test, why can't it be this anything for the purposes of throwing away icons to avoid certain, uh, <laughs> it has only been once, yes, uh, for the purposes of avoiding, you know, negative effects here. So I am going to take the damage. That was my third action. Uh, that's it. End of my turn. I'm testing a 4 to a 3. I'm sorry, a 3 to a 3. It's like a 4. I don't want to I don't want to commit guts. I'm still kind of happy taking a horror here. 3 to a 3. I pulled a 0. <laughs> I can never pull this well when I when I, when I want to, but Give me a horror. No, zero and a plus one. Awesome. All right, the conductor, hunter keyword triggers. He goes there. Um, upkeep phase, I draw a card. The five of pentacles, where you've been hiding. I actually might spend the three resources to put that sucker in play, uh, especially with violent commands in my play area. All right, and now I take a resource. I will have those resources, so that's feeling even more likely than me. Uh, Mythos phase, putting a doom on the agenda, and we're taking a counter card. It is Broken Rails! Ugh. That's not good. Alright, each investigator at your location loses one action. So I have two actions. Uh, this is really bad. And each investigator with four more damage must also discard an asset you control. That is a rough combination. That's a. I just got the forward too. Wow. So here's the. Well. I have sharp vision. So if I get rid of my meat cleaver, so the meat cleaver is like really important for. The conductor, right? But I, what's more important to me? I think the, until the end of time is more important. The, if I can use sharp vision to get two clues, and then I I have well, I won't be able to commit rise to the occasion, right? Because it's not two more than my base value. But I'd be pulling a six to a one for two clues, as long as I I don't pull worse than a minus three, and then I'd be pulling a three to a one. So I could oh, I only have two actions. It's really bad. Um, so the reality is, is I only have two actions because of broken rails. That's such a brutal card. That's a really bad card. The conductor's going to come in, and the conductor's going to punch me in the face for two damage and two horror. Er, and one horror. And I'm going to, I'm going to just want to kill the conductor. It's going to be a good timing to kill the conductor because the agenda is going to advance. So I wanted to worry about it for a little bit. Um, if I put the five of pentacles in, I can survive the conductor's attack if I lose until the end of time. And I'm going to need the meat cleaver to be able to kill that in two turns. One horror. Potentially two horror. Have to pass that. I can heal a horror with a meat cleaver. Alright, I'm getting rid of until the intent of time. If I wasn't, if I had three actions, I probably would get rid of the meat cleaver and just try to get out of there. But understanding my current situation. Unless, uh, here's the other option. I take the attack and I try to evade and move next turn and then until the end of time keeps me alive. Because then I could potentially evade that would have rise to the occasion. I'd likely succeed. I'm going to evade, take a... a um, 
evade. There should be probably one less, one more clue on there. So I can evade, take a clue, and move on my next turn, which is probably smarter. Uh, this is garbage. All right, me cleaver's out. I have two actions. This is like crazy math going on. Question is, do I put the five of pentacles in play and investigate once, or do I investigate twice? Six, two, a one. Yeah, let me investigate with sharp vision and see if I can't get two clues with one action. All right, six, two, a one. Bam. Tablet, minus two. I succeed. Add a doom token to the nearest cultist enemy. There are no cultist enemies in play. So 6 to a 1 modifies to a 4 to a 1. I succeed by 2. I get 2 clues. Awesome. That's done. With my next action, I will put the 5 of pentacles in play and up my game here to have a uh, extra sanity and an extra, an extra health and an extra sanity. Uh, end of my turn. I have to test this. I'm testing. Do I care if I take a horror? Nah, I don't. Nah, do I? I could commit guts. I think the horror might actually. I'm about to take a horror from the conductor, but this is a nice little cushion. To have broken rails is so brutal. All right, I'm gonna do a three to a three. I pulled a minus four. Glad I did not commit guts. That would have been a waste. So I do take a horror. So now I am four and four on Mr. Calvin. Great. The enemy phase, the hunter, keyword triggers. The conductor is massive. So he doesn't go into my threat area. He's going to stay on the passenger car. Uh, I'm going to take a horror. So I'm on five and I'm going to take two damage. I'm going to put one on Calvin and one on until the end of time. So now I have a uh, five stats of five across the board. Now I could have taken a six on the damage, but I, I think just in case I have to lose the five of pentacles, that's probably not the greatest idea. Um, so I'm going to leave it a five and a five for now. Um, and uh, that should be okay. Enemy phase is done. Uh, upkeep phase, I draw a card. I get the 18 Derringer. I have no energy or resources right now and I take uh, one resource. Meet those phase. I put the second doom on the agenda. We check the doom threshold. The doom threshold is met so we advance. Reading this the rearmost car of the train detaches as, is, as it is pulled backward. To your horror it rises off the tracks and is consumed by the gate above you. Remove the leftmost location from the game. Remember the first time I played this I was like what? <laughs> you just did what? That's not, that's not nice. Uh, and then we go to uh, anything there would be discarded. Any investigator there is defeated. Uh, each enemy and asset is discarded. We said already, already said that. Discard all clues controlled by investigators. Done. That goes here. Now we go to Agenda 3. I don't think I ever read Agenda 2. Yeah, over terror and reality, the force of the gate grows with the presence of the winged beast. Several of the rearmost train cars are pulled backward, and there is a dreadful metallic crunch as they are detached. The train cars topple upward and into the rift in the sky. Nearby passengers are panicking. Others are cowering in their seats, and one elderly, elderly man has fainted in fear. All right, fine. And now that advance, we go to the, the mall widens, the terror grows larger, and you can fear feel the rearmost car of the train shaking as it is pulled backwards. The situation threatens to erupt into chaos as more passengers realize the danger they are in. Some passengers are looking for places to hide while others are running about the compartments in terror. Yeah, it's pretty terrifying. Cool. Uh, all right, nothing in the chat that's new, so we are going to grab our first encounter card. It is... Oh, wow. That guy. Uh, emergent monstrosity. So the emergent monstrosity is uh, he spawns at the location to your right, and he spawns. Uh, he enters play exhausted. He's a victory point. Yeah, I'm not going to kill him because that's going to not be uh, possible for little old me. Um, but the nice thing is he does come into play exhausted. So what am I going to do? I, I really need to succeed at this test. 
I'd be doing a five to a three, but let's not mess around with this. I'm doing and I commit rise to the occasion, which I can because again three to a zero, it's fine. And I'm going to try to evade Mr. Conductor here. So we're doing a five. Oh man, I, I might have. Mm, we'll see. I might have wanted to take that damage there just to get that six to a three, but that's fine. So rise to the occasion. Five. Oh, I'm sorry. It's five to a three, eight to a three. So I'm 16 out of 17. I don't know why I always say things like that. Ah, oh, minus one. We're good. So rise to occasion succeeds again. The conductor is evaded. Now I need to investigate. I'm doing a five to a one just as a base because my horror value is already up to a five. Five to a one. I need that third clue before I can move. What do we get? Bam, minus one. I'm just going to keep putting that right in my secret compartment on that bag. So I keep pulling it. And then my third action is... I mean, I can't even ever get rid of Island Commands at this point, which is crazy. Uh, well, here's hoping for the best. So I'm going to move to the adjacent train car. It is... Wow. Shroud value 4, clue value 1. Uh, forced after you enter the passenger car, you must discard cards in your hand with at least 2 combat icons or take 2 damage. I'm taking 2 damage. So I'm going to take 1 damage on Calvin. He's up to a six, and the other damage goes on until the end of time, and that is out of play, and I am hanging on by a thread, thanks to the five of pentacles. So this is where, if I pull the other broken rails, guess what? It is game over. So having an ally in play is nice. Um, I just haven't been able to pull one. I did throw that leather coat back early, but, uh, you know, it is what it is. So we are doing a... Uh, five to a three with that. I'm actually going to commit guts. I think that makes some sense. Uh, seven to a three. Minus three. I succeed. Wow. I needed every bit of guts, but I'm just trying to draw a card here. And we get live and learn, which could come in fairly useful. Enemy phase. Uh, nothing upkeep phase. Both the conductor readies and the emergent monstrosity readies. The emergent monstrosity is now engaged with me because he is not massive he's just a uh, monstrous abomination all right um i think i hear mrs playthrough she should be down any second i might not be alive at that point but it'll be fun so <laughs> enemy phase is done upkeep phase is done we are oh wait no i didn't do upkeep phase i drew this card when i tested that so upkeep phase i draw a card it's a test of will. That's nice. That could have been useful earlier with broken rails. And I get another resource. Mythos phase. We're putting a doom on the agenda. I'm drawing arcane barrier. Test your location as additional cost to move in or out. Test willpower four. If successful, discard arcane barrier. That's fine. If it's unsuccessful, discard five cards. I still have both my weaknesses on my deck. Not really scared about your stupid arcane barrier. What I am scared about is having to deal with this monstrosity and whatnot. I am going to try to evade. I'm doing a six to a three. Bam! Uh, cultist minus one. If I fail, I didn't fail. I succeeded, so I have evaded the emergent monstrosity. I'm going to investigate. I'm doing a 5 to a 4, and if I fail, live and learn can come in pretty big. So I'm doing a 5 to a 4. A minus 1 here would be nice. An Elder Sign would be amazing. So, Elder Sign! Minus 1. That's fine. Whatever. So I get the clue. That's my second action. My third action, I'm going to... I mean, it is what it is. If it's horror or damage, I'm dead. So there's enough cards that aren't either, but I'm not feeling good about this. Third action, I have to move because obviously the conductor would come and he would kill me anyway. What is it? Oh. <laughs> it's a really bad card. Um, okay, well, I have to test the arcane barrier. I'm doing a test of a five to a four. 
Let's see if I pass or fail. I pulled a, a skull that's minus two because of the agenda. So since I failed, I dis discard the top five cards on my deck. So I'm discarding one, two punch, brute force, trial by fire, guts, and a leather coat. Yikes. Um, shroud value is three. Clue value is three. However, baggage card cannot be investigated. Instead, you have to choose and discard cards in your hand to discover a clue. It's a little rough for two reasons. One, I don't really want to discard any of these cards. And two, um, that means it's going to take me three actions to get all three of those clues. This means the conductor is definitely going to get there. Um, and I have no soak. So um, really dependent on some lucky card draws here before I even start worrying about those clues. End of my turn, I have to test Violent Commands. I'm testing a 5 to a 3. And I pull the Tentacles, so I fail, which means that I will take the heart. Now, again, I have Live and Learn, but Live and Learn doesn't negate the negative consequences of failing a test. It just lets you try again. So now I'm super screwed on either damage or horror, because I am up to six of both. Thank you for the five of Pentacles. All right. Well, enemy phase. Uh, enemy conductor moves to the passenger car. Upkeep phase. Emergent monstrosity readies. I'm going to draw a card. Ooh, survival instinct would have been big time earlier because it would have allowed me to advance quicker. Ooh, and I'm going to take a resource. Meet those phase. We're putting the second doom on the agenda. Drawing the top encounter card. It is a resurgent evils. Well, clearly I can't do anything about that. So I'm going to use the second option. I'm going to add a Doom that does make the agenda advance. All right. The next train car is ripped backwards with violent force. A middle-aged man hangs from his fingertips as a car flies unhindered toward the rift. In moments, the car is consumed whole and the man lets go rather than be pulled into the void. He starts to fall but is caught by the rift's force and pulled inside it anyway. Remove the leftmost location from the game. Bing, and each location that any investigator there would be defeated. Blah, blah, blah. Discard all clues held by investigators. Cool. We go to Agenda 4, rolling backwards. Now, remember, Agenda 4 is now equal to the skull. So if I pull a skull, that is a solid, awesome, amazing minus 4. I'm sorry, Agenda 3. So it's now it's a minus it's a minus 3. Remember, it's like 0, 1, 2, 3. All right, the pull of the rift in the sky seems to go stronger, and the entire train begins to roll backwards along the tracks. The rearmost cars of the train begin to rattle, the force of the rift threatening to detach them. You must get out of these cars as fast as you can. Yikes. <laughs> well. Um. I have no way to get two clues. This this was this is one of the train cars that I, I really my it in a weird way at some point the designers of Arkham forgot how to scale things. And like this is one of those cards that if you're playing a true solo game, having to discard three cards to get three clues is just insane. Um, and it's not even like three clues for an investigator. Like, so clearly, I mean, do a clue, do, do two clues for an investigator and make you discard cards or something. If that's the effect that you want. But right now, like you're making me spend three actions and three cards to get three clues. There's no way around it. There's no shortcuts. And now I have the conductor coming in. So this is one of the, the extra train cars that I'm just like, eh, why? Like, it just... The scenario when this this scenario without this card is infinitely easier for the most part than this scenario is with this card, um, and I just don't think it adds much to the the scenario as a whole. Um, <laughs> I mean, and that's part of the it's gross with Calvin, right? Because I just I worked myself up that I have a six intellect. I can pretty much investigate anything. But wait, you're telling me I can't investigate because I have to discard cards instead, which is uh, super not helpful. I, and I still have two weaknesses in my in my, my deck, too. I still have two allies as well. Um, so I, I kind of have to hope I pick one of those two on top. What is it? Winging it. Useless. Uh, brute force. All right. I'm going to die because I can't win. 
Yeah, I can't do it. Uh, my third action, meat cleaver. That's fine. Enemy phase. Conductor comes in, punches me in the face. I take two har and one damage. I will choose to take a trauma by damage, and I am defeated. Um, the super badness of that is now I lose all my story assets. So Warren Rice was kidnapped, as was Dr. Armitage. They were both hiding in my deck, unfortunately. Uh, and I also get a weakness added to my deck. It's discard the top three cards of your deck across time and space. It is a very, very vicious scenario to lose um and that's that that's uh <laughs> that's uh the Essex county express i uh the return to makes it makes it one of my turns from one of my favorite scenarios to one of my most like conflicted scenarios uh and that's like very very rarely has the return to done that uh for me for one of these scenarios um it's just a really vicious really vicious scenario this this Getting this location plus broken rails when I did. Um, I like Resurgent Evils. I like the options it gives you. That worked to my advantage. Uh, my card draw wasn't great. I really could have used an ally. Um, if I, you know, just having that extra soak. I, I have two leather coats and the Cherry's Keepsake, and none of those. I didn't pull any of those. So I'm just kind of left at the mercy of the stupid conductor, which I'm trying to get away from. I would have killed the conductor at Broken Rails and it make me throw away a card, uh, an asset as well, you know. So I think that you see the the both the strengths of Calvin as well as some of the drawbacks. Um, the strengths of Calvin is that my stat line got amazing. Uh, the drawbacks are anything that punishes you for having extra damage, well, it's going to super punish you. And Broken Rails, if you have four damage, you have to throw away an asset. Well... I need four damage to be useful. <laughs> so what? Um, I, I've had some really epic runs through some campaigns with with Calvin. I think he really comes to life um, in in a lot of the campaigns. I think he's really awesome in Carcosa. Uh, he's super fun to play with in Forgotten Age. You just gotta worry about the Curse of Yig, but if the Curse of Yig's not in play, you know, go to town. Uh, the Five of Pentacles. You see the power there because I'm like six across the board. But then I get to a baggage car that I, I can't investigate. Well, six across the board doesn't help me at all. Uh, freight car would have been great. I'm trying to think, oh, the other cars. These are the cars that weren't in play in this in this scenario. Uh, passenger car. I would have had to take two horror entering, so that would have been a problem. Parlor car only has one clue, and I, I just needed to spend three resources. That would have been easy. Dining car. Uh, would have made a grappling horror come into play. That could have been problematic, but I would have been able to evade it. And then I had survival instinct. So if I had dining car, oh, dining car, grappling horror comes in. I evade and move. Um, and the sleeping car is just one clue. So really any other one of these, well, three of these five cars, if that was there, well, the freight car was next door. So I, if I could have had any combination of four of those cars, I, I really could have run through, got to the engine pretty easily. And uh, it would have been the engineer, but I'm at a six. You have to parlay with the engineer three times, basically, and I would have been able to pull that off. Um, so this this bag of char is really, really where it ended for me. Um, There's just no way. If I had an extra action somehow, if you have Leo DeLuca, great. Th discard three cards and move. You know, get the heck out of there. But it just it let. I was just trapped. I was totally trapped. All right, I'm a little annoyed. But that is what it is. It's Arkham. <laughs> so, always brief. Uh, yes. In, unless you're Mrs. Playthroughs. We were not playing the return to. I will I will say. <laughs> it's just so annoying. Um, it wasn't even a good script for you guys, man. I'll, I'll tell you what. <laughs> I mean... Ugh! Whatever. It is what it is. When I'm a game designer, I can make different decisions. I, I just... I really do... You give me a recurring monster two scenarios in a row, and they give me a baggage car that I'm basically a trap, you know, a sitting duck with with literally nothing I can do except hope I pull another soak. Um, it's it's pretty brutal. That was just a really bad combo, and it's so punishing too. It's so punishing. It's like do you get you lose two assets, and you get yourself a weakness. Um, I literally got zero victory points for the pleasure of that. So that's like just 
super annoying as well. And now I go into scenario the the third Mythos pack with with no allies and uh, <laughs> and no XP to boost up my deck, uh, which will be a fun challenge for good old Rita Young. So uh, come on back. The scenario is going. This campaign is going sideways, and we have a there's a hill in our near future. Not. <laughs> Not too far away, I will assure you of that. Um, so we'll see uh, see if we can kind of turn this around. Um, I'm not that hopeful. I'm not going to lie. It's <laughs> You, you kind of get a sense of how these scenarios go. Um, they do throw you a bone. The designers are like, if you're doing badly, they rebalance scenario 6 for you. Or scenario 5, Mythos Pack 4. Um, but... It's also like the most useless scenario in all of Arkham. So it's like, thank you? Maybe? <laughs> like, whatever. Uh, so yeah, this this would be, if I was playing on my own, this wasn't on video, I would probably be like taking, I would just start over and start fresh. But uh, we'll play it out. Maybe we can pull out victory out of the jaws of defeat. It is Arkham Horror after all, not Arkham Walk in the Park. So I guess I should be expecting this. And... Uh, seeing no comments in the chat um calvin's really strong it just high variance and uh that's to be expected with uh with hit the mechanics as you see them um i will come back again with rita young she will have one mental trauma and one physical trauma uh which wouldn't isn't bad for her she's interesting i find her unique weakness really bad oh speaking of that um i have thought a lot about my top 10 uh, and, and after playing with with uh, with Pete and William York so close, uh, I, I've said it before, I probably would sub out uh, Ash, William York with Ashcan Pete. Uh, Pete's a lot stronger than I remembered. And uh, York's, I still think York could be really strong. He's got some things that work against him in a way that I, I, I his, his unique weakness is really vicious. I mean, there's graveyard, graveyard ghouls and the three damage. I mean, they, they come up at so many inconvenient times um, that I, I think that uh, you're you're better um, you're better off with Pete and uh, just ha the way you can manipulate Duke and get you know, discard cards and re-ready Duke and uh, having that built in if you can build yourself some buffs to your your stats and have enough you know skill cards to go with it. Um, I think there's a lot more strength in, in Pete than with Yorick. So um, once again, Greg is wrong, and uh, he's 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 willing to listen to reason. <laughs> so, um, and that's about that. So um, Pete's uh, yes yes I, I'm yes I, I've replaced William Yorick with Duke in my top ten list is really how that's gone. And uh, Pete's just along for the ride. Speaking of which, uh, if anyone was like interested in Barkham Horror and this thing's like, yeah, it's going to be too much of a joke. I'm very impressed with how well put together that scenario is. That side scenario is very, very fun. Uh, the artwork is very clever. Um, I find with Arkham, I'm getting more frustrated by some of the design decisions with the, the campaigns, but more enamored with how awesome the new side scenarios are. Uh, so that's an interesting development with this game. But uh, yeah, Barkham Horror, I definitely would recommend. It's Even if you only play it once or twice, it's worth it. It's it's very, very fun. It's a nice... If you love this game, uh, you will love what they did with, with Barkham Horror. Um, that's about it. Although the next scenario can kill him. Yes! Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Now, scenario... Mythos Pack 3, Scenario 4. <laughs> uh, there are, just Google, um, what the heck's the name? Blood on the Altar, Ashcan Pete, and uh, you will you will read many grown men crying, and women, I'm assuming, too, crying because they lost their puppy. And uh, it's, it's very sad. And I was there. I helped my friend Steve through that. And um, one day he will... He'll, move on from his trauma and be a better man because of it but i'm gonna move on from this live stream and uh maybe be a better man because of it i don't know i'm just kind of a bitter man right, <laughs> right now uh i guess as bitter as i get with these live playthroughs so that is that uh questions comments epiphanies put them in the chat below calvin's cool he's really fun uh not top 10 worthy it, there's just too much that can go wrong as we've seen and uh but he's very very fun very very cool Back next week with Rita Young. Hopefully we get back on track because we're going to need it. We need to turn this ship around. But until next time, thanks again for joining me and happy gaming.